Okay, so this is Fernando Ribeiro. We are back on the second video tutorial. It's basically an update based on the latest changes on Yuma. Um, here we are working for generating slots and uh, proper overlays for the military boots we have, thanks to uh, Prefabrica. And so those are the assets that we have, and here, back here, we have uh, Unity open. I will be basically working on the project and the pack itself that I will provide through the asset store uh, tutorial file. So the first thing I'm going to do is to import this FBX file. In fact, I will just drag this on here. Uh, to the raw files. Okay. And let me rename this one. This is going to be the mail but, uh, one. I'll keep this one here because I will show uh, it's probably I, I'm going to do some changes later so I want to keep both of them so you guys can compare. And something important uh, is the scale setting. Depending if you're working on Blender, 3D Max, or any other software, we probably have a uh, difference on scale. I just dragged the nail boots to the scene here, so we can notice it's quite small. And of course, we should uh, adjust the scale factor here on the import settings. I usually also don't like to import the materials, so I'm going to apply those changes and remove the materials folder and material file created. Um, so we have here the, the boots. And uh, probably one really important step that I should also mention now. Uh, we are going to also drag to the scene the unified base mesh of the male model. So I'm going to look here for the unified uh, male, male mesh. So this is the base file, the FBX file. I'm going to drag here and you should see something similar to what we have on Blender. As you can see here. The unified mesh, and this is uh, usually a good step because you can actually, <coughs> sorry, uh, you can actually test if the both meshes are matching, uh, are correctly positioned. Also, super important. Let me open here the both both of them. We have here the mesh of the base. Uh, base mail mesh and we have here the mesh from the boots the boot itself and i would like to show you uh here the game objects of the mail unified and from the boots and pay uh special attention here on the position rotation and scale you need to be sure those values are matching and um, <coughs> So if you're working on 3D Max, for example, uh, you need to uh, pay extra attention to those values, uh, both of the, the parent game object and the, the game object of the mesh itself. And uh, I'm aware on the export uh, process on 3D Max and other 3D software, because there's different uh, coordinate systems, uh, usually we end up with a problem with the rotation values and uh, also the scale and possibly even the position here if we forget to set those values correctly on the, the software, the 3D software itself. So this is usually the most, uh, usually the where we find most of the problems when creating assets, uh, those values here. So uh, this is uh, probably the most important thing I should mention here, uh, paying attention to those values on both of them. So uh, this said, um, 
we should create now the slots and I'll explain how this uh, has been handled by Johan on his uh, help on the Yuma development. So I have here the raw files. Second, so we have here the raw files. I just imported the FDX. I'm also going to create here a new folder for the slots and one for the overlays. Okay, so right now I'm just going to create the slots and after that I'm going to worry about the overlay. And that's the probably the uh, second most important step to be sure everything is okay. I'm going to open here uh, on the Yuma uh, toolbar. We have the material builder. This is super important. And I'm going to drag this guy here to the... In fact, I, I should drag all of them so I have all the, the space for material builder. And I don't uh, change windows while working on this. And I'm also going to expand here the... the mail boot file, FTX file. So, uh, we have some differences uh, from the material builder we have now and uh, the old version we had on the, the video tutorials from something like six months ago. So, uh, now what we usually do when generating the slots and I'm, I'm going to uh, always show these steps. Uh, not all of them are necessary for uh, Blend files, uh, for files generated with Blender. But uh, I will guarantee we have a standard step that should be done for any, any asset, asset provider, independent if it's working with 3D Max, Blender, or any other 3D software. Okay, so we need to drag actually this file here. You need to pay attention that we have the mesh itself, the after generated for Mechanim, uh, depending on the uh, settings, on the port settings for the rig. We have the rig itself, the mail rig, and this is the guy we actually need to work with. So I'm going to drag this one here. Uh, you're going to notice that the slot mesh, uh, skin and mesh renderer has actually been updated. Also the element name. We can actually change this name, but in fact I'm going to change this one for 01. Uh, I want to keep the both versions that I'll be working on the this slot. I'll probably do some later changes and I want to keep both of them. There is no need for texture folder because we are not working on the overlay now. We are working on the slots. We are not going to worry about this as well. But we need to worry about those uh, four guys here. One of them is already set. So we have this race prefab skin and mesh render. Basically this guy is the unified base mesh. Uh, so, if we are creating this for uh, male, we use the male unified, unified base mesh or female one. In this case is the male. The same here, we should drag this one. But in this case, we don't drag here, we drag directly to the race one. Okay, so let me uh, try to explain this. Uh, it will be a simplified explanation, but let me try this one. So why we actually use the race prefab skinned mesh render? Uh, basically, if when we, we uh, split the body base mesh in different pieces, like the hands, feet, legs, the torso, uh, let me show you this, uh, it will be easier. Let me drag the separated base mesh. You will notice the seams on all the junctions. So we have the seam here between the legs and the torso and so on. And basically the way I uh, 
a development for handling this is using the the unified base mesh as a reference so in this case this won't be so uh, not a, a really that important because there is no actual junction between the male boot and the rest of the body uh, but this is also going to be used uh, to analyze the difference between the scale and the rotation of the source file of the male boot and from the race uh, prefab. So if we use uh, 3D software like 3D Max that has different coordinate system, uh, uh, Johan managed to handle this, those differences in the material builder uh, calculation and process step. Uh, but even uh, having this, uh, it's always uh, good uh, to keep an eye if the rotation and scale and everything is matching uh, when you drag the, uh, the object to the scene itself. But now we have this. And uh, if you're uh, basically working with uh, body parts, this is how we handle the seams. So when we have the elven ears, this kind of thing, uh, the, the, there's no seams because of this. Um, so now we have the material sample. As I've explained on early tutorials, uh, usually I like to keep the, the sample material, the base sample material for everything that I I'm aware that I want to use the same material, so I usually type here sample material or sample uh, base, and we already reach the, the the base material that we provide here on the material samples. So the last thing we need to set is the slot folder. So this is basically where we need uh, or where we want the file being generated. So I already created the, this folder, so I just drag here and I click here on the create slots. Okay, so we should get this uh, good uh, message here that everything has been successfully done. And uh, now we should also have here on the slots the actual uh, file with the processed data, the mesh, the skinned uh, mesh render, and the slot itself. Okay, so we are reaching here the time limit for this video. I will keep the rest of the process on the following videos. So that's it for this video. See you guys. Goodbye.